confusing or but so Elise, welcome and fellow toastmates. Which is the best government? That which teaches us to govern ourselves. And that's a quote from Johann Wolfgang Goethe, the famous German playwright. So <coughs> So the best government is that which teaches us to govern ourselves. I work for the Bureau of Workforce Transformation, which is a bureau within the within Michigan's Department of Energy, Labor, and Economic Growth. The goal of BWT, in a way, is to encourage or get workers to empower themselves and to govern themselves. So BWT implements Michigan's workforce investment policy. In Michigan, the mission of workforce investment is to emphasize meaningful education and training over simply reemployment. So today I will discuss the, kind of the sources of authority of uh, Michigan's workforce investment system. And if we have time, I'll cover some of the services that Michigan's workforce investment system provides. <coughs> now I work for the it's the Workforce Investment Act section. We call it WIA or WIA. And we implement federal law, which is the Workforce Investment Act of 1998. Now there are numerous sources of authority and tools that we use to implement the Workforce Investment Act. And if you take a look at the diagram I gave you on the box on the upper left-hand side there, I just kind of list some of the sources of authority I'll just quickly go over those. <coughs> so at the top, the ultimate authority is the Workforce Investment Act. And that's a federal statutory uh, act. It is, it's known as PL 105-220. The PL stands for public law. And the 105 is the 105th Congress. And the 220 is the number of the act. So it is so every Congress has a two-year term. And we're talking about the United States Congress. <coughs> and that is the 105th Congress from the founding of the country. And the, that was 97, 98, I think, was that Congress. So if you're going to the law library and you want to look up the Workforce Investment Act, you would find a section on, first find the 105th Congress, those volumes. And then you would, you would leaf through the volumes until you get to uh, Public Act 220. So, the, so that's kind of the ultimate authority. And then the next kind of level of authority is the uh, federal regulations. So the Department of Labor is the relevant department for, for BWT, for where I work. And the Federal Department of Labor is empowered by Congress to create regulations to implement the Workforce Investment Act. So, so the, the, basically the Workforce Investment Act has a provision within it where it says <coughs> the DOL has the authority to uh, promulgate rules or create rules to help implement the intent and the, you know, the federal statute itself. So in order to find the regulations, they've been codified. So if you're looking on the, on the chart here, 20 is the title. CFR stands for Code of Federal Regulations. And part 652 is a series of uh, regulations within, the, uh, within that title that kind of provide for more of a detailed uh, directives telling, telling how us and all relevant us and other states kind of how to implement the Workforce Investment Act. And I should mention that also the public laws, the statutes are also codified. Not all public laws <coughs> are codified, but like things like appropriation acts are generally not codified. But the public laws are generally codified in what's called the United States Code, called the USC. And the United States Code and the, the, you know, regulations and statutes are basically codified so that attorneys and policymakers can kind of easily find these statutes 
and make sense of it. So at the next level, so you've got federal statute, statutory authority, then you've got federal regulatory authority, and then at the next level, you have kind of the depart the federal depart DOLs, Department of Labor, puts out directives and letters, kind of formal documents that kind of further detail and direct us how to implement the uh, workforce investment system. And then if you at the next level you have you have the state level, the BWT, we also put out things called PIs, which are policy issuances, and we send out formal memos and letters, which we direct the local Michigan Works agencies and con <coughs> contractors, and we're basically kind of telling them how to implement the law. So there are these, these different layers of authority, but they also function as kind of tools that we look to to kind of do our jobs to implement the, this kind of complex workforce system. So that's just kind of the, the lay of the land. That's how, that's where we get our, our sources of authority and those are the tools. And I'll just briefly cover the services now. So at, at the top of that box, it says one stops. The, the uh, Workforce Investment Act provides a one stop delivery system, which means one physical center that provides a variety of services. And these are the Michigan Works agencies. The service centers coordinate different programs into a unified set of services at a single location. So on the left-hand side, of, you've got kind of the heart of the Workforce Investment Act, which are the adult and dislocated worker programs, the youth program. And then on the right-hand side, you've got some of the non-WIA programs that are implemented by the service centers. I don't have time to go into all the different services that are provided, but just, I just want to make you aware of that, that, we, that it provides both Title I Workforce Investment Act and non-Workforce Investment Act programs. <coughs> Those service centers implement those. So in order, there are numerous ways a person can get connected to WIA services. And there are just two brief examples are if a plant closes, and, you know, people are laid off, the state will send a representative there to provide orientation and tell them what services are available. And then another way, at an individual level, you're laid off. You are, you have to go into a, in order to collect unemployment, you have to go into a Michigan Works <coughs> service center. So you uh, go into the service center, uh, go onto the Michigan Talent Bank and file your resume. And then at that point, you're supposed to talk to a caseworker who can tell you what services might be available to you. Just in closing, I just got a couple of brief comments. So we have creates a service center structure in which a variety of other workforce related programs are funded and implemented. And we hope that these programs and services will provide Michigan's labor force, will improve Michigan's labor force, attract employers to Michigan, and give workers the skills they need to get high paying jobs. 